That good boy right there. That big fella. What's going on, guys? Just finished up my tours this morning. Had uh, three people in here doing uh, my underwater gator tour, hanging out with Casper a little bit. That big fella. Look how cute he is, huh? Oh, look, he's got his he's got his hand up on my arm here. You hanging out, big guy? Now, uh, just because I guess I haven't talked about this in a while, I've been working with Casper for about 13 years now. And as you can see, he's very, very well trained, very, very smart. And um, we've been doing the underwater gator tour together for about five or six years now. And so he understands the tour, knows what to do, knows what his job is, and then he gets rewarded for it. I'm gonna give him a treat right now, actually. So if I move over here and call him over. Casper, come. You see him turn right around there. Come. Come here. Come. Good boy. There we go. And munch that down. There you go, big fella. Now oh, you hear him? Doing a little bit of a, kind of like a little purr right there. Pretty cool. There you go, big fella. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, I've been working with him for about, uh, it's going on like 13 years now. And he's very, very well trained, but I do like to point out that he is trained, not tame. And, uh, you know, a lot of people see uh, little clips and such in my videos where I'm interacting with him. People are like, oh, look, he's tame. He doesn't bite, you know. Um, so I just like to always clarify that he is a real alligator. He does bite. Now, he's never bit me or anybody in my tour. But, um, you know, if I were to do something foolish, like if I were to, like, slap my hand against his face or something like that, uh, or anything that made him feel threatened or anything that made him feel like I was no longer me and that I was, uh, like, prey in some way. Like, he's literally sitting up on my chest right here. Um, <laughs> but if I were to do something like, like if I was just laying in here and just like, eh, like look like I was dead, you know, he'd come over, he would investigate, he'd probably nudge me a little bit and then take a little bite, see if I react. If I didn't, then he'd eat me, right? Um, so, you know, he is a real alligator. He's not a dog, you know, that's what I always try to point out is he's an alligator, not a Labrador, you know, um, these guys do have all of their wild instincts and that he was caught out of the wild as a nuisance gator, maybe like six inches shorter than he is right now. So he is not raised in captivity. I didn't raise him from a baby. That's one of the most common things people think is, oh, you must have just raised him. Or people are like, oh, well, you must have just fed him before the tours. That's not true either. Uh, we don't feed him before the tours. And even if we did, it wouldn't make any difference. And then a lot of people are like, well, if you feed him enough food, he'll get full and he won't attack you, right? Wrong. That's not how these guys work. You know, for one, uh, they don't have much of an idea of being full. I've literally watched an alligator eat so much food that he throws it up and then eats it back over again. Beautiful smell right there, right? So, yeah, that is a... Uh, that is a thing I have seen before with these guys, so they don't exactly get full. And then also, if I was feeding him to make him so full every time, he would be obese, okay? Because we only feed these guys about once a week. And that's another big one too, a lot of people don't understand is that crocodilians, they don't produce their own body heat. And so because of this, they have very low metabolic requirements. And so they don't have to eat very much. We only feed them like once a week. A 250 pound alligator like him is gonna eat less in a year than like a 30 pound dog. And so because of this, if I fed him a bunch of food to make him full before every interaction, he would have died of like heart disease like years ago, okay? It doesn't make any sense. It's not possible to be able to do that. Okay, and he would, again, he would be morbidly obese. And obesity is a thing in crocodilians. Uh, you'll see this at a lot of zoos sometimes where uh, they don't understand that they do. You have to, uh, you know, be careful about how much food that you're feeding them. You can't overfeed them. And a lot of places do that. And then they have overfed obese alligators or crocodiles. It's actually pretty darn common. I'm grabbing this thing because it keeps on like pushing up against my neck right here. But um, <clears throat> anyways, though, yeah, you don't want to overfeed them, you know, because again, they, they do get they do get overweight and that causes health complications and that's going to shorten his lifespan. But, uh, but anyways, so why does he act what he is that he does and why is he so chill? Is he special in any way? No, um, it is literally just a consequence of training, of working with him and, uh, you know, proper training. That's what it really comes down to is getting him to understand how this works, that he doesn't have to be afraid of me and that when he does what I want him to do, that he gets rewarded, he gets treats, okay? And that's, that is the only reason. And then, you know, I get a lot of people like, oh, well, he must be drugged or sedated. No, I mean, for one, that is unethical. We would never do that anyways. But 
for two. You can't do it anyways uh, for a couple different reasons. For one, these guys are a conscious breather. Every breath he takes is a conscious decision. And uh, so what that means is if he is unconscious, then he's not going to breathe on his own. Just like you're, you're, crap, I might have just said that backwards. I don't know if I just, <laughs> I might have just got myself. The point is, these guys are conscious breathers. We are unconscious breathers. So we breathe without thinking about it. And we continue to breathe when we are unconscious. Like if you're put under, you continue to breathe. He does not. So we have to take one of them to the vet. We actually have to intubate them. You got to put a tube down the throat to breathe for them artificially because upon sedation like that, he's going to stop breathing and then he can die, right? So that's why we have to intubate them to do that. Um, and that's important for them when they're in the water like this because, you know, as an animal that uh, gets in fights and whatnot, if he gets in a fight with another alligator and he got knocked, knocked unconscious, and then he automatically started breathing underwater, he would drown, which is exactly what happens to people. That's why shallow water blockout is such a scary thing if you're a free diver, because if you black out underwater, your body automatically starts breathing underwater, and then you die, all right, you drown. Uh, so for crocodilians, it's actually pretty beneficial to not have that, uh, that uh, unconscious breathing thing. I'm twisting my words up here, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> But you get you get the idea I'm trying to make there. So, um, but anyways, yeah. So we do not uh, sedate them or anything like that in any way. And the way that he acts is just, again, just because of the training, um, which is such a hard thing for a lot of people to understand. They just, they just don't believe it or they don't want to believe it or think there's some sort of trick behind it. There's no trick. I have trained uh, at least 20 alligators over the years to know their name, come when they're called, and to be chill and be able to be handleable kind of like how Casper is here. Now, Casper is my most well-trained alligator that I work with, um, but, you know, I have trained a lot of them.